Hi, I'm Pamela, and if you're new here, I breed British Shorthairs in Perth, Western Australia. I have a passion for cat breeding, and I'm here to share my experience and knowledge with you. This video is part of a series on my YouTube channel, designed to help breeders new to the hobby. But if you've been doing it a while, stick around, as you might just pick up a tip or two. In this video, I'm making show curtains for my cat show cages. Okay, well, it's a Saturday morning and I was thinking, what am I going to do today? I want to do something productive. So this morning I am going to make some new curtains for my cages, for my cats, the cages that I take to the cat shows. I have a show coming up next weekend and I have a few cats entered in that and I think I'd like to have new curtains for that show. Um, so I thought, I'm going to be doing it. I might as well take a video of it so that you can see what I do when I make show curtains because if you've not made them before, it's a bit like, oh, I have no idea where to start. You can buy them and other people do make them and sell them, um, but they can be upwards of hundreds of dollars, especially for the really fancy ones. And the ones that I'm making today um, have cost me oh, a lot less than that because I bought the fabric and I'm gonna be making them myself. I have a certain way that I like my curtains to be so that they're all the same and they fit with the bases of the way that I have the bases of my cages. There's lots of other different ways to do them, but I just thought I'll show you how I do them. You can get an idea and if you're a bit handy with a sewing machine then you can make your own as well. So to get started, you probably want to look at what a uh, cage looks like and show curtains look like in that cage. So I have one I'm just going to show you. I just need to, um, I'm just going to put something on the table because it's glass and I don't want to scratch it. It's got an old towel. Okay, so this is one of my show cages. This is actually Herbert's cage. Um, a little tip I'll give you now is when you go to shows in the morning, it can be a real hassle. You've got a lot going on and you want to get your cages ready and get your curtains ready. I actually put my curtains in beforehand and there's a certain way that you can put them in the cage and then fold the cage up with the curtain inside. And that's what I've done here. So I'm just going to pop this open. And what you need to do is make sure that you tie the ribbons onto the edges of the cage, but don't tie them onto the side pieces because then you can put those pieces back into the middle and collapse it down. It all makes sense when you've got a cage. So I'm just going to make sure I don't scratch my table. So this is the curtains. You can see I've got to pull the side pieces up. The other side first. This is Herbert's curtains. I tend to have curtains for each cat. Um, I find that, I don't know, I just like to do that. Some people like to mix it up. People choose curtains to match their cat's colouring. People choose curtains to match their eyes, um, to show them off a bit better in the cage. I think that's kind of important, but it's not super important. You can actually do whatever you want as long as you don't have anything in there that's got the you know, this cat belongs to this person, anything too distinctive, you can pretty much do what you want, as long as they're safe for the cat as well. There we go. We don't want, I'm just going to do one side up. We don't want the um, cat to be um, getting caught up on the curtains and getting damaged, damaging themselves. Um, I'm just going to slide this around. Oh, that was easy with the glass top. Um, I'm going to check out my microphone there. This is what the curtains look like in the cage. Let's close that up. It's flapping around wildly. So they join up at each corner and then I like to have one in the back as well. Now this particular pair of curtains I've had for a long time, the elastic's a bit saggy in them. I have tightened it up at least once, but I think they're on their way out and they've got a little hole over there and Herbert has peed on them more than once at a show. Um, but they get washed, but yeah, I think they're just a bit tired and he's going to get a new set today. So I've bought some new fabric to make him a new set, a beautiful new set of curtains. And what I need to do is I need to make the curtain that goes inside, it gets gathered up with elastic and then the side ribbons are put on. With my cages, I'll just show you here. You can also buy these bases that are made to fit the cages. So I get this at the pet shop and I actually make a cover for them as well. So I'm going to make a cover that's kind of like a pillowcase. I have made fitted covers as well, but they're a little bit more fiddly and I think I'm going to go with the pillowcases now. So with the fabric that's left over from making the side curtains, I'm going to make a pillowcase that goes over these as well. What other people have in their cages, you'll notice it shows, 
is they will have like a pad. Let me get rid of this one. They'll have like a um, pad that goes on the bottom of the cage. This is from when we used to have small cages. I haven't had one of these for ages, but this is the type of pad that they will put and then it'll go in the bottom of the cage and um, that's quite comfortable for the cat as well. So I was thinking I might even make some of those that if I've got some fabric left over. So that's the other type of base that you can have for your cage. And people have beds as well. You can make like a donut bed to go in there and when you buy sets of them, that's generally what they come with. They come with a curtain, one of these kind of bases and then a bed as well. But I kind of combine the bed and the base together by getting that one from the pet shop that I can put into like a pillowcase. So I'll just pop all of this away and then we'll get started. Now what sort of fabric do I use? I like to use panne velvet because it's really easy to um, wash. It also can be just shoved in a bag. Well, I fold it up, shove it in the bag. When you get it out, it doesn't have all creases in it and it doesn't need ironing. A lot of the satins that you can get, they need to be ironed, otherwise they look really wrinkly. So I find that this one's a really good wash and go kind of um, fabric. And it's also great if it gets hair on it. It doesn't seem very noticeable. The cats can't get really caught up on it. And I just think it's the best fabric to use. So I went to Spotlight and I got myself some new colors. Let's have a look at what I got. Here we go, here's my colours. I got a new red. I have red curtains already, but this red seems a little bit brighter and I really do like a pretty short hair on a red. And I have always had red for Ralphie and now I've got red for whoever's going to have those curtains. And then I've got a darker red. I've had this colour before, I have a small set that's in this colour, but I don't have a large set. So I'm going to make some large ones in that colour. They didn't have any good pinks, so I got this sort of dusky pink. I think they'd look okay for maybe, I've got a chocolate torty and I've got a cinnamon torty. I think they might look pretty on that colour. I'm not too fussed about whether or not it makes, um, or what it does for the cat. I do take into consideration their eye colour and their coat colour and make choices about whether or not they're a dark coloured cat and choose a lighter cur curtain for a darker coloured cat. Um, but I'm not too fussy about it because I just want to have the colours I like as well. And this colour here, I think I'm going to make Ralph, um, Herbert a new pair of curtains out of this colour. I'm not sure if you can see it. It's a beautiful royally sort of blue, but it's got a bit of an aqua, I'm not an aqua, it's sort of a tealy tone to it as well. So I really like that one and that's why I'm going to make them here. The other thing I've got is when I was at Spotlight, I made sure I got these as well. I got ribbons to match. And I just buy it by the roll because there's enough on each roll for how many ribbons you're going to need. I like to do them a bit longer because over time, even when I have cut the ends and done them with a bit of heat to seal them up, over time they will fray and they will get shorter and shorter because you have to keep cutting bits off them. And you need to be very careful of the ribbons. You always, always need to cut them at an angle and you need to be very careful because I have seen kittens at shows play with the ribbons on their curtains and because they've been cut bluntly, they've been able to pull them apart. And I don't know if you've seen a ribbon that comes apart like that. And then they've just started eating it and eating it and they're eating this thread and it just keeps going because cats can't actually pull it out of their mouth. And um, more than once as a steward and a judge at a show, I have pulled ribbons out of kittens and I'm very cautious of that with my cats. So I make sure I cut it at an angle and I actually will go on the stove and just um, melt the ends of them as well to seal them up. But even if you do that, they will look a bit ratty and um, start to come apart at the ends. And if the cats do actually chew on them, that can make them look a bit ratty as well. So if you make them a bit longer, at the beginning you can just cut them down. And then later on, if they look really ratty, you can take them off and put new ribbons on. You don't have to replace the curtains, maybe just the ribbons need replacing. So you can update old curtains by uh, adding new elastic, pulling the elastic tighter and restitching it, or um, you know, adding new ribbons on. So that's what I have and I think I'm going to start with this beautiful blue colour because this is the one I want the most. For this next part you're going to need a pen and paper because we're going to work out the size of the cage and we're going to use that to work out how much we need to cut of the fabric. Um, I'm just going to grab my ruler. I have a really big ruler, I use it to make my cage curtains. I have a measuring tape as well and that works fine but I just really like the ruler because it's really simple. So we need to know how big the cage curtains need to be and where we're going to measure, so we're going to measure along here, along the back and along the side because that's where the curtains go. And go 
going to check out which way this goes. There we go. So this is a large show cage and it's 47 across the side. So I'm going to round that to 50 just to be nice and even. That's 50 centimetres. Across the back here, about 75 centimetres. I'm just going to round that to 80. We don't have to be too precise. And oh, then we also need to know the drop. So this one's uh, about 53, so I'm going to round that to about, let's just round it to 60. Great, so we know we've got 50 and 80 and 50. So that's 180. So let's say two meters. And we know that that's about 60 centimeter drop. So two meters, we want it to be rough, uh, gathered up though. So we need to add more fabric in to that measurement. What I generally do with a large cage is I just go to three meters. And that's what I did when I went to the shops. This is three meters of the blue fabric, probably a bit more because a lady just normally cuts off a bit extra when they do it, but close to three meters. Now, that's great, we know the size of that, and now we need to worry about the drop size because this is more than 60 centimetres wide. I'm just going to measure it because I didn't actually measure it this time. I did look online when I was purchasing it, which ones I wanted, and then I just went in and bought them without double checking. So, what I'm going to look at here, using my trusted ruler, That's one metre. One sixty-five. So it's one sixty-five wide. And I know that I need about sixty centimetres. So I know I've got about I think I could just take work out that calculation to be that I need to cut a metre of this off the bottom and then that will give me enough for the drop. Now, uh, actually no, probably a bit less than that because even though that's 60 centimetres, you need to be able to fold it over to do the casing for the elastic. So you need probably about another, oh, let me just measure how long I would normally give it, probably about five centimetres. So, yeah, no, that works out perfect. So if it's 165 wide and I need this 60 centimetre, I need a 65 centimetre drop. That leaves 100 um, centimetres of fabric left behind. And that's what I'm going to use to make my cover for my um, bed. Um, let me think. So that's, again, if that's 80 centimetres by 50, that means I've got plenty of fabric there to make that base cover as well. All right, let's get into it. Now yours might be a little bit different in size to this, so I definitely still measure it up and make sure that it's correct. If you're making them for a smaller cage, because we use smaller cages for kittens, uh, and they don't get used as much anymore. Everybody just tends to go for the large cages. In Australia, it's very easy to get this size from Kmart. They have this as, um, I think it's the medium. I'm just double check. But the small cages, I do have some of them as well, and I do like them for kittens because they're really cozy in them, and they're also a bit lighter and easier to fit in the car. Okay, it's time to measure. Now I know I've got three metres in length, but I need to get that one metre cut off the bottom. It's a really nice blue colour and you can see it's got that beautiful um, crushed velvet sort of feel to it. It's called Pane, P-A-N-N-E. I think I'm saying it correctly. I say it like pasta, Pane. Okay, I'm just gonna double check my measurements. I'm just gonna go around the other side of the table and straighten this out. Ooh, that'd make a really nice tablecloth. Got my ruler. Got my little sewing kit. I've got some tailor's chalk, which I'm going to use to mark it up. Find that that's really handy and um, brushes off afterwards. Got my good scissors. Yeah. I found this back on itself. Well, it was just as well I checked that because it's not actually what I thought it was. I must have done a bad job of measuring that. It's actually 45, it's 145. So what I need to do is I just need to cut off 65 centimeters and the rest will still be fine for my bases. 
And like I said, it doesn't have to be super precise. The other good thing about this fabric is that you've got the um, edge of it here that you can use at the bottom. You don't actually need to hem the bottom. And it doesn't fray, so you don't have to worry about um, zigzagging everything, overlocking everything. Okay. Now I'm going to mark 65 centimetres. And just because I'm being a bit paranoid, I'm going to get the old curtain. If this is the first set of curtains you have, you won't have any to use. But I know these ones fit really good. Wow, they really do have a few holes in them where he's scratched up the curtains. They can get a bit rolled up at the end when you wash them. I just straighten them out. That's why it's good to have that extra, extra metre of um, volume in them. These are 60 centimetres. And the fold over I have there is actually about seven centimetres, but there is plenty of space in that. So should I do 65 or should I do 70? I think I'm going to do, let me just check that again. Check at the other end. I might just check in the middle. That's 60. About 66. I think 65 will do it. Those are probably a bit stretched out too. All right, 65 centimetres is the winner. I'm going to use my chalk and I've got my um, ruler. I'm going to go to 65 centimetres and put a mark. Put one here as well. Using the edge of the table to mark it up. I'm going to do one up here. There's already a bit of fur on these from the cats that are in the house. Petey and Teddy have been investigating the bag. Ah, uh, 65. So I've got the marks on there, and I'm just going to use my ruler. I got this ruler, I'm pretty sure I got it at Spotlight. I really like it. I'm going to put that on those marks. Do you want all of them? Mm, they're a bit out, that's okay. Close enough. I'm going to do that all the way across this fabric. It's such a pretty blue. When I first started showing my cats, everybody showed their cats on orange satin or white. Um, purists put theirs on white and some associations made you have white. But that to me was very boring. And I've always said that part of our hobby, yeah, we breed cats and we show cats, but part of our hobby is also being crafty. And um, People who have cats are generally crafty people and they like to do things like make bags and and have um, crafty things and make jewellery and knit and crochet and all of those kinds of things. And part of our hobby becomes looking up, doing things like making curtains and making curtains in different colours and fun colours. And all of that adds to what our hobby is about. And the more interesting it is, the more likely people are to be involved in it because nobody wants to do anything that's boring, do they? So I couldn't, I hadn't been to shows, national shows in Eastern States when I first started exhibiting. And the whole show was just white curtains. I had to actually make white curtains to take with me uh, because I didn't have any. And they, the whole show was just this sea of white curtains and it was really, um, different to what we see today. Now we walk into a room and it's full of colour and lots of stuff going on and all sorts of different cats and everybody's sort of showing a bit of their personal flair through their curtains as well. And I just think that's just a really cool element to our hobby. It just adds a little bit of something to it, makes it more enjoyable and a little bit better to look at. And even for people like when the public are coming through and having a look at our cats, it's, it's more colourful and interesting for them as well. So I'm all for anything that makes our hobby better for the people, you know, in the hobby and the people coming to see it. And to me, uh, you know, this, this channel is about breeding cats, but I am really into the show side of it and that's why I breed cats. And I'm really hoping that, that even if you didn't think about it when you, when you started thinking about breeding cats, well, if you've been breeding cats and you're not really into the show side of things, I really encourage you to give it a go. Because it's really interesting and enjoyable and it's just something to do and, you know, you meet nice people. Okay, so that's all done. 
I'm going to cut this up now. Okay, so now I've got my curtain. This is the piece that's going to be the curtain. And this is my leftovers. I don't want to get them mixed up. I'm going to fold this up. Now, if you are not someone who's into doing this kind of thing, you can actually get them made for you. You can actually have ones that you buy at shows. There will often be someone selling curtains. You'll have a rack and have curtains there for sale. And you can also get them on Facebook. A lot of people have uh, pages for their curtains. They're a bit harder to find, but you will find them in advertising in cat groups. Um, so if you're in a show cat group, you can just ask and people will tell you some places. And I can think of one lady I know who's in Adelaide and when she goes shopping and gets a nice fabric, she'll advertise, I've got this fabric and I'm going to make three sets of this, who wants one? And she'll make them to order for you based on that. So you get to have a bit of a say in what you want. Or you can just pick them off the rack or pick them out of pictures. Or find a friend who makes them and beg them to make them for you too. Just don't ask me because I don't want to do other people's ones. I barely get around to doing my own. This is the leftover and I want to use this leftover to make a pillowcase to put around that base. So let's just double check what we've got here. Because I might be able to make more than one and that would be really handy because we're talking about a stud male that we're going to put um, these into these curtains. And he pees on things. He, he does. When we get to the show, I hook his curtains up and then I lift them up off the cage sides and, and so he can't pee on them until he's done what he's doing. And he'll normally pee and then I can put them down again because his bladder will be empty. But he will often, if he uses the tray, he might step out of the tray and step onto his base if it's in the um, cage. So having a second cover means that I can easily just whip that off, put a fresh one on, put that one in a plastic bag, take it home and wash it so it doesn't stink out everybody else. So let's have a look and see what we've got in here. Got my base again. Um, these are called, these are from a company called You and Me, and I got these at uh, Pet Barn. Now let's have a look. Oh wow, I've got enough um, fabric here that'll actually fit this way instead of that way, which is really cool. And that means I can use, at that edge, I've got an edge that's um, the, oh, I can't remember what it's called, salvage, the edge that's not um, cut, so that'll be really handy as well. So to do that, I'll just need to have that go over like there. And I'll just basically be sewing up around like that. So that's a great fit. I'm going to measure that, see if I can get a couple out of that. But I might be able to get maybe two covers out of that for sure. And then I'll see what's left over. I might even be able to make a little pad as well to go on top. I don't know, something more for him to pee on. I'll need to have enough space there for an edge. Oh yeah, that's good. How much does that work out to be? You should always measure it because the drop, which is how wide the fabric is, can be different different um, brands of cano or different fabrics. You can make them out of different fabrics. You might find a really nice velvet. You might find a really nice um, satin. You know, whatever fabric you want to make them out of is fine. Different fabrics have different uh, you know, how you have to care for them and how easy they are to work with. But that's just a matter of, you know, personal preference. Okay, so that's one metre to there. So I need about a metre 15. And if that is three metres, going back to my piece of paper, so if I need a metre and 15, then I've probably already done the maths at home. So that's 230 in total. And that leaves me with 70 centimetres. 70. If you make a mistake when you're cutting it up, don't freak out. There's a bit of, you know, you can all, you've always left a bit of extra in there and there's no reason why you can't sew bits together. So this is a three metre piece of fabric. But if I wanted to, if I just wanted to make one cover and one curtain, I could probably do 1.5 metres and do it in two halves. If I didn't need a base, I could do it that way. Or if you cut it and you stuff it up, you can sew two pieces together and it doesn't matter. No one's inspecting your curtains at a show. 
I've seen some really average curtains. I see people that have just got um, like a blanket, a cute blanket that they got. I think it was rainbow blanket and they liked it. So they made it into curtains by attaching it with bubble bag clips. So why not? I've done a really bad job of measuring this. I can't be right. So you don't have to use a uh, fabric that you bought at the fabric shop, you can use anything really. As long as it can be cut into shape and turned into curtains and is safe for your cat to be in, um, go for it. Remember as well, you're always going to need to have sides on your cages. So the sides on your cages will be part of it as well. This piece is my leftover scrap piece and I may make something out of that later. I'm just going to pop that away so again so I don't get confused with other pieces. This is my two bases and I'm going to need to cut these into two pieces. I'm excited to have the two bases, I think that'll be really good. Now this piece of fabric in total was uh, $6.50 a metre and I got three metres so that's $19.50. Each roll of ribbon, I got the wider double-faced ribbon, and I think they're about $10 a roll, and I got four, but it was buy three, get one free, so probably, even if I just had to pay for them all, so $10 for the ribbon, that would make that, what, $20, $30? $30 for a set of curtains and two bases is pretty cheap. And they're the colours I want and they're made to suit how I like to set my cages up. Which is a bit different. I don't know anyone else that uses pads like these ones. Now fold that in half. The easy way to do that is just to run the scissors down the side where the fold is. I didn't double check it would fit so I might be in trouble here but I think it looks pretty good. Done. When you do cut this stuff, it does leave a little bit of dust because you're cutting, it is sort of like a velvet and that can be a bit messy. So it was good that I did it today because my clean is coming tomorrow. And she loves to vacuum. Okay, then two bases and my curtains. It's time to get them all pinned up now. So back to the curtains and I'm going to I have two sides here. I have one side that is the, the edge of the fabric and I have one side which is the cut side. And I'm going to use the cut side as the place where I put the elastic. Now Herbert's curtains, okay, Herbert's curtains here. You can see that there is, um, that's the back of them. It's not doing this very well. There's like a casing that the, the elastic goes in and there's a little bit at the top, so it's folded over like this at the back. And there's two lines of stitching, one here and one here. And the elastic is inside them. And I like to leave a little bit at the top, so that when it goes like that, it leaves a little ruffle at the top. And that's just how I like to do my curtains. I like that little ruffle at the top, which is why I added that extra space at the top. Okay, okay now we need to measure so we know we've got a 60 centimetre drop is what we want. And we added on, was it five centimetres? Yes. So I need to fold over that five centimetres and then I'm going to do two lines of stitching along there. Now I need to pin it with my pin. I'm going to sit down for this bit. When you're pinning it, have a think about how your sewing machine is and how you're going to be threading it through because the worst thing I've ever done is I've pinned up a whole set of curtains with the pins all facing one way and that's not the way that you pull them out as you're going along as you're sewing it and it's annoying. So I know my sewing machine goes this way. What does it? I'm just going to go check. I think I had it wrong. The excess fabric goes out this side. So I would be sewing it like that, which means I want the pins to be facing this, with the pulling out bit facing this way. I'll just put one in so I know. Great, now I can just turn it around this way again. 
So I'm going to fold over five centimeters and I'm going to pin it. Oh, handy. This is actually five centimeters wide. So I'm going to use this instead of my ruler. The edges of the pan I do curl up a bit as you're using it, and, and that's just how it is. I don't know how to describe this, but as you're doing it, because you're not perfect with the actual um, cutting out, you might find that it's a little bit high in spots and a little bit low in spots, and it might pucker a little bit, and that's all good. Just wriggle it around until it makes sense. As you're sewing it, you might find that you get a few little puckers in it as well. Okay, so some suggestions about different colours and things for your cats is if you have a light coloured cat, you want to go for, you can go for a darker curtain and that's great. Some cats that look really good on dark colours and maybe even on black is something like a Bermilla, a silver cat, a silver Persian, a chinchilla, um, really pale cats, a white cat, uh, a van. I've got a few vans, so maybe I'll put them on these darker curtains. If you have a darker cat though, the cat will blend into the curtains and be a bit less visible and judges will walk up and down the cages and they will look at the cats in the cages. And also if you've got too many things in there or too much uh, places for your cats to hide, it can be a bit annoying. And as a judge, when a cat's hiding, I will go in and I will, you know, uncover it. But I rarely uncover the whole cat. And it's not really giving me a chance to have that final look at the cat. I normally do that after judging. After judging them all, I'll go back and have a bit of a look. I might be doing some comparisons between ones that I like. So now I'm talking as a judge here. Um, and I will maybe lift up the curtains or pull the curtains back or get a steward to do that for me. When you have too much stuff in there, there's a bit going on and you, you run the risk of, of giving your cat a bit too much to hide from. If they have curtains in there, they can go behind the curtains and that's great, they've got somewhere to hide. But if you've got, you know, cubbies and donut beds and all sorts of things, it can be a bit tricky. That, in saying that, I want your cat to be comfortable, I just want to be able to see it. With Herbert, for example, he has the covered base, so there's nowhere for him to get under the base of his bed. Uh, I think that's why I really like these ones, with the soft, with the flat ones, they just go underneath and you can't see them. He has to sit out on his base. He doesn't mind. Initially, he might hide behind his curtains. Uh, he's a very social cat, and he will come out and sit out and look pretty good on his and, and lay in his. I give him an empty litter tray. He lays in his empty litter tray, and at least, even though he's in the litter tray, he's at least out and showing himself off. If anybody happens to walk past, that might be going to judge him. So I like that about that style of curtain. Um, but if your cat feels more comfortable being cuddled up in a donut bed or if you've got one of the breeds like a Sphinx that's a hairless breed and they need to be warm, then of course you're going to put them in a donut bed or, or a snuggly igloo or something. Now, as for making them to match your curtains, no. <laughs> that is not something I've ever tried or wanted to try. I would be more inclined to buy the bed and make the curtains to match. Okay, so that's all pinned up. I can put that one aside for the moment. Now I'm going to pin up these uh, base covers as well because uh, once I get the sewing machine out and I put the fa uh, not fabric, if I put the thread in that's going to match these, I want to make them all at the same time because then I can change it over to the next colour for the next one and I don't have to keep changing back and forth because that's annoying. And I'm just going to join them together like so. I think having the pillowcase style like this is also going to be good because I'll be able to flip over um, the which one am I going to do this? flip over the base if it gets dirty. Not if it gets peed on, but if it's got dirty or, or if there was a problem, I could just flip it over because it'll be double sided. You can see, I don't know if you can see, the edges of the um, panne really do like to curl up. It's probably too dark a colour for you to see. And you have to kind of stretch them out a bit when you're pinning otherwise you'll end up taking all of the um, size of your fabric off the edge i'm doing this inside out so that then i can turn it the right way out and when you've got the uh, velvet side to velvet side it kind of grips on itself as well so it's 
even more annoying. So I use more pins when I'm doing it like this. I have made one like this before and it's just, it's very hard to get it exactly square and that kind of thing, but it doesn't need to be. It's just a pillowcase for a cat show bed. Sorry, that's my rings being on my glass tabletop. I only got this um, recently and I love it. Cats can jump on the table without scratching it because before it used to always have a tablecloth on it and plastic under it to stop them scratching it, but now it's just got this glass tabletop which is really good, highly recommended. So that's all ready to go. Now I'm gonna do the next one and probably make myself a cup of coffee and then get my sewing machine out and I'll be back to put them together. And we're back. Now it took me a little while because I actually ended up cutting up the other pieces as well in the other colours because I had the table cleared off and I thought I'd do that before I got started with the sewing machine. But now I've got my trusty Janome out and this is a very old sewing machine. I think I've had it since I was about 20. Um, so it's quite old. Uh, and it works fine. I just do a straight line with it so it doesn't really need to do anything fancy. Yeah, that's just a really good sewing machine to have. I just use it for cat curtains basically. Now I'm going to do the curtain part first and I'll just sew that together. And what I'm doing now is making that casing at the top and that's the bit where the elastic is gonna go through. So that is the first thing I'm going to sew. Here's my pin container. I'll need to put my pins in there as I take them out. Don't wanna leave any behind. Hopefully I've got my pins around the right way, like I said. And I have not, I've put them back to front. So <laughs> that's going to be fun. I'll just have to deal with that. Uh, I might not need to pick, actually pull them out because I will be doing that um, double stitch like I said. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew to start with, I'm going to use the markings on my machine on the little plate thing and I'm going to show about a centimetre down from that fold. So I've got the fold at the top, I don't think you probably can't see that, um, I've got the fold at the top that we folded down and then pinned. I'm going to do a centimetre from the, the fold and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do another one a couple of centimetres down from that. So about a centimetre from the end of the fold. So there'll be one line at the top and one line at the bottom. And in the middle of those lines is where we put the elastic. And by doing it about a centimetre down from that fold, I'm going to get that nice um, frill effect that I was after. Okay, oh, my thumb. Okay, that's one lot done, and I've got the pins in it, so now I'm going to take them out because I didn't have to take them out because they were backwards, but I don't need them in there anymore because that first stitch will hold it in place. Now that I'm back at the beginning, I'm just going to do exactly the same thing, except I'm going to move it along. I'm going to leave a space about that big so that I can put the uh, elastic through it. The elastic I use is, um, I don't even know what it would be. I don't think I've got it here. Uh, the elastic I use is only like half a centimetre wide, so it will go in quite nicely. If you use the thicker elastic, the bigger elastic, it tends to flip around inside the casing, which I'm sure the smaller one does as well, but it doesn't cause as much like wonkiness in the curtains. Uh, when I have the big elastic in, you have to often take them and stretch them all the way out and realign it. But So with this um, thinner one, it doesn't really need that. So we'll do that now. Okay, so that's the casing done and that's pretty much most of the job of making the curtains done. Just going to trim off any end bits to make them look tidy, little extra bits of thread hanging off, we don't want that. I can never remember how much elastic I use because it's based on, uh, you want it to be stretched so it's not actually going to be the size of the cage because that would be saggy. Um, so I've got a hair of it, it's all the curtains here. I'm just going to measure how long they are when they're like not stretched out. And then I'm going to take a bit off because I know that these ones in particular are a bit saggy. Because you can see I've already had to shorten these ones and I've put a safety pin in there to hold them together. I've just been fine, it's been going to shows like that with no problem, but it's not a very classy look. 75, so 150. You can always make it more or less. If you make it too tight, you can just 
open it up again and tie a new piece in if you, or stitch it even, you can join elastic together, you can do that. If it's too, sh if it's too floppy, I can just do what I did there and, and pull it out a bit. But cut it off and do it neatly and not put a safety pin in it. 50, so just enough on that one. But before I do the elastic, I realise that what I need to do first is the ribbons, because if you attach the ribbons now, you can measure it out where they need to go. Once you put the elastic in, it's all bunched up together. It's a bit harder to tell where the ribbons should be going. So I've got my ribbons here that I have purchased. And the ribbon is 5.4 metres. Now I need three, uh, five ribbons. But I'm not going to measure it out. I'm just going to divide the whole lot into five. And then I'm going to tidy up the ends. And the way I do that is I just go like this. And there's that one, two, three, four, five. And then just let it run through my fingers. And I've got, just let me double check that. One, two, three, four, five strings there. Five ribbons all the same length. Can I cut them? I'm just going to straight up cut them to start with. And then we have the ribbons. They'll all need to have the ends cut off at an angle, like I said earlier, so that they don't fray because um, you can see, I think this one's already doing it, they're starting to fray. And what happens is it goes zig 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 and then the kittens or cats will eat it. Now, there's the ribbons ready to go, but I need to know where to put them. And I know, her, I keep going back to Herbert's pushy curtains. I know these curtains sit really well in the cages in um, at shows, so I know I've got the ribbons in the right place and I never remember where they are so maybe this time I might write it down. I probably won't write it down. I want to stretch them out so that the elastic is so that they're straight so that I can measure them. Obviously one lot goes at the end. So that one is at about 70 centimeters. Hopefully this will work if not I'll be moving them. Can you get rid of these again? Okay, now how you attach the ribbons, um, I've tried lots of different ways over the years because, I don't know, they, they don't sit well in the cage if they're not attached properly, but I can't, I can't really say that I've come up with anything super successful. But what I like to do is take the ribbon in half, like that, fold it in half, sorry, and then where I've stitched those two lines, I put the ribbon against the edge of the, I don't think you can see that. I put the ribbon against the edge there on the inside of the curtain and I just stitch two lines where those lines are. And that seems to be fine for how to attach the ribbons. If you attach it to the top, it can pull at the top. If you attach it to the bottom, it can flop over. I don't know, that just seems to work. So that's what I'm doing. And also in doing that, I know that when I stitch the ribbons on, I'm not actually going to be putting any stitching in that casing where the um, elastic's gonna be going through because otherwise when you go to put the elastic through, you're gonna get to where the ribbon is and you're not gonna be able to push the elastic through. So you want the elastic to have a free run. So it makes sense to do it that way. Just going to stick a pin in that. So that's my first one. I'm going to do my next one at 70 centimetres. My ruler out again. This is where it starts to get a little bit fiddly. And you start to think, oh my God, why didn't I just buy them? I'm going to need a marker to cut my ribbon. And you can have matching ribbon. You can have different ribbon. You can have whatever ribbon you like. I like to have a fatter ribbon. I just think it looks nicer for longer unless they chew on it and then I know from the other side I'm going to have one at the beginning again same thing do it in half and what I should have is after I've done this one is I should have fingers crossed those two ribbons that I put at 70 centimeters on either side directly in the middle of them I'm going to put a ribbon as well and the reason I put one there is because in a larger cage the curtains can get a little bit saggy at the back it just holds them tighter into the cage. You don't have to put, if you didn't have as much ribbon as this, you could put a smaller ribbon there that just ties them together. But I like to put the whole length of the ribbon because, like I said before, if they get frayed or chewy, you can just cut them shorter and shorter. This ribbon is uh, not double-sided. I couldn't get this color in double-sided. I wanted it in double-sided. My other ribbons are double-sided. 
So I'm just making sure I'm doing the shiny side out. Now I'm just going to do, like I said, those two stitches along either side of where the elastic's going to go. And if it's a bit higher or a bit lower, that's not going to matter either. Well, as long as it's not in that area where the elastic's gone. And I'll actually reverse it and do a double stitch because that's the area that's going to be having a lot of stress on it uh, when it's tied to the cage. Okay, so that's the ribbons attached. Now we're going to put on the elastic, put in the elastic. What we need to do for the elastic is we need to use a safety pin. Nice large safety pin. I'm going to do the end of it up, poke it through the elastic, then do the end up. And because this is shorter than the three meter long curtain, I'm just going to chuck a pin in the end of it, back up to the beginning of the curtain, where I'm about to thread it through, so that it won't actually go through and I won't end up with it halfway, get to the end and realize that this end's been sucked into the curtain. Hope that makes sense. Okay, so I've got the pin, I've got the casing, I'm gonna shove it in there. And because it's got the metal, because uh, it's a metal safety pin, it's nice and rigid, you can feel it in there and you can just push it along with your fingers. So just pushing it along until you get to um, the end. When you get to the bits where the ribbons are, it can be a little bit tighter if you've gone a little bit in. Oops, I've still got a pin stuck in there, so that's not going to work. And the idea is that you push it along and then it, it ends up being gathered up and then you sew each end. Yeah, you, you sew each end together and then you've got the elasticated um, curtain top. Okay, and I made it to the end. Now, what I'm gonna do with this safety pin now is I'm actually gonna open it up and I'm gonna pin that to the edge. So that's kind of securing that bit now. So we have the elastic in there and it's secure at both ends. And now I can make this end a bit neater and pull it through and put it where I want it to be. And I'm going to just tuck that down in just past the end of where the fabric is so that the elastic isn't on show. And then I've got it, I can feel it with my fingers. I'm going to put a pin in that oh, and in my thumb. And then I'm going to run the um, sewing machine, just going to do a, a bit across the edge of that at the end. So again, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, and the ribbon is attached, the elastic is inside the casing and I'm just going to do a straight down across the um, elastic to hold it in place. Now if I wanted to adjust these curtains later, um, I won't make it, I'll do um, a decent amount of stitch, I'll probably go down and then up, but I won't go to town on it because I want to unpick that later if, it, if I need to adjust it. And that's all good, that's all in place. Now I'm going to go down to the other end and do exactly the same thing. I'll undo my safety pin and I'll switch to using a regular pin. Okay, so that means that that's the curtain done. Now I get onto the bases. Now I'm going to sew up my two um, base covers. So there's a really straight, just a straight line. It's just a straight line and then down. Nice and simple. And I think this time I have put the pins in the right place, so that's great. Just start at the beginning. And with these, again, I'm not too precious about it. If they're a little bit wonky, it's fine. Okay, that one's done. I'm just going to turn it inside out. I have my base. Fingers crossed it fits, just like a pillowcase. And it does. Fantastic. So I have my base. And I have my curtains. I'm really happy with that. Now I'm just going to take the ends of these curtain ribbons, now that they're on the curtain, hold them together and just snip them off at an angle so they don't fray. Okay, so I've got the cage ready. The first thing I'm going to do is pop the, I call these the puffies. I don't know why I call them puffies. They're kind of puffy. Pop that in there. And that edge just gets tucked over. I've never had a cat try and get in there. I'm sure that someone would. So that's a nice base for them. It's a really, it's quite a thick, dense base. I find it really good to have those as the bases for the cage rather than just having a towel or something soft. And because it's so firm, they can't get underneath it. These ones I'm going to tie to the front 
and I tie them at where the front hinge is, making sure not to tie them to the side piece, and that means you can collapse it down with the curtains in there. And this one, I'm going to tie the other side. Now, this is what you would do at a show. So you would get to the show and get your curtains out and start tying them all up. And that's fine if you've just got one cat. But if you're taking a bunch, and, you know, I have friends that will take eight. I've taken eight before. But I would normally show three, maybe four. And there's still a lot of cats, so it's still a lot of effort to try and take. Now, this is going to be interesting to see whether they fit. And, and then have to do all these cages is crazy. So if you can do it before you go to the show and collapse them down, that just is another thing you don't have to do when you get there. Tying that one onto the back hinge. This is where it helps if you've got long arms. I don't. If you can't reach the back, you can sort of push it through halfway, take your hand around and then thread it through. And then this one at the back. And the first thing I notice is it's saggy. So I'm going to have to tighten up that elastic. I'm going to have to undo it at one end, pull it tight and re-stitch it. And I can use um, this as a good chance to tell. You can see that's very saggy there. Very saggy. Um, I can do that. I can undo one piece here, pull it through and adjust it and pin it so I know when to sew it. But that's how it should look. And of course, when you go to a cat show, you need sides on your cages. So you have the cage sides that cover the outside of the cage as well. I use white plastic for that. And the white plastic is um, tablecloth fabric, just cut to fit. Uh, I cut several out of one big roll of white tablecloth. I also had some extra pieces which I joined together with white cloth tape and made them there. And then I just attached them to the front with fold back clips. So you need to have the sides as well. This is not enough to have just the curtains, but this is the curtains. So I'm gonna tighten them up and then I'll be back. Well, I've adjusted them and the elastic was actually well out of whack. I actually have a lot there. I haven't cut it off yet. I've got a lot there that I actually misjudged that by. That's why it's good to not sew them up too much. And also, if they're nice and free in that casing without being attached to the ribbon area, um, you can adjust them quite easily. And you can adjust them over time as well because the elastic does wear out. Now, here is my little kitten. He is a little odd-eyed band, British short hair kitten. And he is modelling here for you. His name is probably going to be Boris or something like that. I'm not sure. Hey, little Mickey. But he does look really good on the um, dark coloured curtain. Hey, buddy. Hey. And if he wants to, he can nip behind there and hide behind there or he can just hang out in there as well. He doesn't seem too fussed. He's probably going to be a show kitten when he grows up, so it's good for him to learn now what to do. What are you doing, Nikki? I think he wants to come out. That is how we make show curtains. That's how, I, that's how I make my show curtains. Everybody has different ways of doing it. Uh, it's a good idea to just go ahead and experiment and try what you want to do. Hello, buddy. Oh, he's so cute, isn't he? He's so cute. There we go. There we go. Um, just have a go at it. Uh, make them to fit your cage. Make them to fit your cat. What suits you with your cat. Um, try different ribbons, different fabrics. A couple of things to note about fabrics is that if you were thinking about getting glittery um, fabrics, you can often get the, this particular fabric, Pane, comes in glitter styles as well. The glitter comes off on your cats and that's not such a big deal except it gets in their eyes and the last thing you want is for a little bit of glitter to cause your cat to have a winky eye at a show. You don't want to have that. No. Uh, it also can, you know, it's sprinkled around the cat, it's not very nice and it also gets in all your stuff, even just sewing them up, get glitter everywhere. Um, and they don't wash very well, the glitter will come off. And once the glitter's come off, they look a bit there. So I think that can be good for special occasions. Maybe if somebody else has made them for you, they'll be good. You can also put lace trim on them. So around the top, you could do a second, um, you could do a second layer of lace. And then when you put the elastic in, That'll make a nice lace frill around the top of your cage as well. Or you can do that full length so they can have um, the normal curtain and then they can have a sheer sort of curtain of something nice on top as well. 
what else can you do? You can put anything really you want, any trims and things. Just make sure they're not things the cats can get off and chew um, and get into. And yeah, enjoy making your show curtains. Enjoy going to shows. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you would like to see more videos about cat shows and cat breeding, um, just subscribe to my channel because I'm always adding new content.